Hi there folks, it's a beautiful day today so I thought I'd take advantage and do you a quick uh, introduction to the pond. Um, it's getting to a stage now where, well, it's never going to be finished but the uh, construction's pretty much done on it um, and I've added fish recently, everything seems to be going well so I thought I'd just sort of take you through the, the key aspects of it really in case you want to build one yourself or you're just generally interested so uh, it's a uh, semi-raised pond uh, two feet out of the ground and two feet down dug down you can see it's sort of it is on a sort of raised piece of ground to start with so but the floor of the pond does go lower essentially so you can see down in there it's actually uh, about 1.3 meters water depth um, and the dimensions three meters along the long edge there and uh, 1.7 I think it is on this shorter edge here so uh, it's about 6,000 liters and you see it's got three windows 25.5 uh, millimeter glass in those windows, double laminated, heat soaked, um, and the uh, walls on it are block, and I built it out of solid, dense concrete blocks, um, and I think they're known as six-inch solids. They're 140 millimeters wide, which is pretty much six inches, and I used them on edge. Uh, three courses high and so far so good seems solid as you like the wood on the outside is just tantalized planks 22 millimeters by 150 I want to say wide 22 millimeters thick by 150 tantalized planks and they're just screwed on with one screw at the top and like wedged in with the gravel around the bottom so they're dead easy to get off basically so I can inspect the wall if I need to um, you know I can change them if I want um, I did consider building it out of sleepers but um, to use decent quality sleepers it was ridiculously expensive um, and because it's got a box weld liner in it I didn't want any movement at all I didn't want things swelling or cracking or split in so blocks won over with more advantages in my eyes anyway so you know not saying to do it that way it's just do it how you want this is what worked out best for me um, so after a dug down I put in a concrete collar using a C25 mix and I did put some rebar in that as well not a huge amount to be fair but a single run all the way around and then made sure it was really nice and level and then built my um, block wall up on top of that. First time I've really built anything like that, so learning as I went along, but turned out nice and level in the end. If anything, the living wall behind it is slightly off level, so but it doesn't really bother me too much. So this is the big window, obviously. Uh, the coping is C24 timber. Um, exact dimensions of that I think it's about 4.7 millimeters thick um, sorry 47 millimeters thick and 225 millimeters wide so it's just the right span to uh, cover the blocks and have a tiny little bit of overhang as well um, and it's stained in I can't remember the exact name of the stain. Silver Cops, I think it's called. It's Ron Seal, I think, or Cuprinol stuff it is. Just fence stain. And the uh, cladding is a mixture of Ron Seal, Tudor oak, and dark oak. Rough, roughly 50 50. I mixed it up myself because uh, I didn't like the individual colours on their own. Um, the uh, windows something people want to know about a lot um, were stuck in um, well basically once I dug it out and everything I put some um, insulation on the sides 
Um, the insulation that I used is called Ecotherm. It's 25 millimeters thick. So when I put that around the windows, it left basically a 25 millimeter sort of recess, um, which I stuck the window in. So then the inner surface of the window was flush with the inner surface of the insulation. So then when the box weld liner went in, it was all level and I stuck the um, windows to the wall with, uh, I want to say HA, is it HA6 or HA9, I can't remember exactly now, just silicon based sealant I believe that is, held it to the wall really nice and firm um, and then I stuck the liner to the window on the pond side with a MS290 ideal seal which is a MS polymer sealant. So the box weld liner is an EPDM one millimeter liner and as far as I read uh, polymer based is the best thing to stick um, and it worked first time absolutely brilliant no leaks at all. Um, I did find it pretty difficult to trim the liner on the inside in a nice straight line um, and it ended up a little bit jagged so I don't know if you can notice but I did use a bit of Gorilla Tape on the inside just to get nice straight edges um, so yeah it worked okay but I don't know if it was really needed in the end because you, you, the water kind of obscures it a bit anyway you don't really see it a lot so um, but yeah worked really well uh, skimmer over there is the um, let's go around and have a look at it actually Let's go up the secret path here. Right, so I made this little cover for it. It's not perfect. Lift that off. See, it's a uh, Cockney Koi wide mouth skimmer. Um, let's go to the pond side just here a minute. I'll drop the phone in the pond. So you can see the kind of water level this is running at. It's pretty high, but it still works the same. You can essentially run it at any water level, really, and it just works fine. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with, again, used MS290 to seal this. Uh, no leaks first time. I've got a bit of egg crate in there as well, which acts as a guard. Um, literally costs like a five quid, I think it was. I think you can get a proper guard to go with it but it didn't come with mine um, and that works just fine do need to clean it occasionally but it just comes out fairly easily um, you can see the skimmer in operation there got a basket in there with some little foam pads that are made works really well um, and if you can see that so you're drawing in the water there it's focused And then I just made this like lid for it, screwed that onto the bottom. It's not perfect, it's pretty difficult to cut that cut that out there with the tools that I've got anyway. A mate helped me uh, make this with a band saw we used to cut this circle and then I just added that on so it just locks in. Pretty neat, fairly flush. So there we go. I've not actually attached these copings down completely yet. Um, let's go back out to the front. Um, I did do these front ones using a um, hole cutter and plugged it. Uh, and it worked okay, but because I'd already stained the wood, it's left little marks on it. Um, no other way to do it though, really, because you couldn't actually stain it when it's in place. Um, and obviously you'd have to have the plugs in to do that, so it's all right though. It's just you know nitpicking a bit, I suppose. Really, bit of a perfectionist. Um, so let's have a little wander down this end. So as you can see, it's uh, covered by a pergola here, and on the underside, I've got some corrugated polycarbonate sheets, and they're on a slight angle backwards. Keeps the rain off real nice. Um, and I've been building this living wall as well. You see that it's made up of plant pockets, 75 in total altogether. And it's attached to the concrete fence posts. Um, and this is the first year for it, and it seems to be doing really well at the moment. The hookahs 
coral bells particularly are doing pretty well. Got some Brunnera, Macrophilia, Jack Frost in there, some Coleus, um, some ferns. Obviously, it's not finished yet. It uh, costs a fair amount to fill up those pockets, to be honest. Um, so I'm starting off with quite small plants to keep the cost down. See how it goes, really. It's a bit of an experiment as well. It's got an irrigation system on it, and if you can see there. The um, tub down there is connected to my overflow on the pond, which is here. This isn't totally finished yet, this bit, so. So that is the bottom drain. It's got a three inch aerated bottom drain, which is a JBR plastics drain. Uh, pressure pipe all the way underneath, three inch, comes up here. And then you see the T connection the horizontal pipe there goes along to the filter system, which I'll show you in a second. And this riser section allows for rodding of the drain. And also the white thing in there is the overflow. So, um, it's funny, it does fluctuate slightly. Um, goes up and down, I don't know if you can see it there, just sort of breathing slightly. And when you close the valve off, the bottom drain valve, it does overspill sometimes. So I am gonna put a cap on it um, but I'm just waiting to get hold of one. This other pipe here is a one inch air pipe. You see the transparent pipe there is coming from my air pump. Yeah, I, I need to get a 90 degree elbow on there to get rid of that nasty crease in it. Um, so yeah, works well though. You see the air supply coming up there. Uh, that black pipe coming down, that is from the overflow and that goes into the reservoir box there, which is where the pump that supplies the irrigation system on the living wall lives. So in theory that is topped up all the time, although I'm not actually running it on a trickle in and out system yet, the pond. So it's also connected to a water butt I've got in the corner so I can top it up when I need to. Um, and uh, this is run on a seconds timer. And this vertical pipe is connected to a pump, goes up, shoots out of these horizontal bars that are all over the wall so water's everything and that runs for about 45 seconds twice a day at the moment and it's got a seconds timer plugged in uh, you'll see that in a minute seems to do the job at the moment although of course i can adjust it if i need to if it's not keeping things wet enough or reduce it in fact and of course you can always just spray it down with a hose pipe if necessary so a big Japanese aurelia here I've had for a few years gave it a bit of a savage trim recently but it's uh, growing lots of nice new leaves on it I've had that for quite a long time um, down here just before we move on you can see a few things that big long black pipe running along there that's connected to the waste outlet on my easy pod and then it goes down into a manhole cover so when I want to clean the pod out and then empty the waste water it just goes straight to drain it doesn't flood anywhere with nasty stinky water the other pipe there you can see that is coming from um, the filter system and that shoots out on a jet about pretty much in the centre there about down that wall underneath the skimmer and it's got an elbow on it as well, pond side, so you can actually direct the flow to a certain degree. Uh, that's just a solvent weld pipe, that is. Um, works fine. I put a little junction on it there because I am planning to add like a bog filter on the back wall at some point in the future. We'll sit pretty much uh, centrally, like a big sort of trough or tray basically and um, that's going to overspill into the pond via a water blade. So I've got a few ideas for a, you know, a interesting design for that, but um, I think that's going to be next year, probably before I add that on. Don't need it yet anyway. You know, the fish in there aren't producing that much waste, really, as it stands. So um, those are the main points. Let's uh, go and have a look at the filter system I've got on it. So um, again, so obviously this isn't quite finished yet. Need to build a lid for my uh, little filter bunker there. You can see the uh, bottom drain pipe coming in. It just goes through the bottom. So let's just take these lids off. 
Okay, so put you on a wide angle mode there, just so you can see this a bit closer up. Um, so yeah, it's a fairly sort of basic thing. It's not block work or anything. It's very packed into quite a small area though, all of this. So you see I've got my um, weatherproof boxes here with uh, four gang plug bars in each. Uh, this is the seconds timer for the wall. Got it off e um, sorry, Amazon Near Pow, I think is the brand. You can see that there. Although to be fair, you could probably use a smart plug. Um, although I think the minimum amount of time they do is about a minute. So, um, so this is fine for now anyway. Uh, got the other plugs running stuff. And as I say, this obviously closes up nice. Not a lot, didn't leave myself a lot of room there. So it's kind of awkward. Bit of insulation on the back and then there's a shed there. So it's all nice and uh, secure. And I've got a bit of a roof over it as well. Although I am planning to extend that bit of roof to completely cover it and as I say I've not built a lid for it yet either um, we've got another four gang in there so we've got eight plugs in total any of which can be timed um, I didn't want to go for one of these junction boxes because they didn't really offer that functionality and seem to be quite expensive so uh, these were about I don't know 15 quid each including the box and the plugs so that's great, it does everything I need. They're fairly bulky, I suppose. But uh, So going along here, uh, you've got a couple of pump controllers. You've got um, an E8 Vary Pump 10K down there. And that is the controller for that, obviously. Seems to run great. Running it on about 70% at the moment. This control here, not something I see a lot of people in the pond community using, is a Sichi SDC. 9.0 pump um, and let's just go back round to the skimmer because that is running the skimmer that Sichi SDC 9 and you can see it down here okay and now that is like a really simple arrangement basically the pump is literally glued on to the um, hose tail of the skimmer um, Works fine though, doesn't leak. Um, it is disconnectable, uh, just solvent welded it on, um, and it works fine. And yet, also, while I'm down here, you can just see this. This is wasn't a lot of detail on these skimmers when I was looking online, apart from everyone I saw seemed to leak. Um, because this is at the top row, the pressure on here isn't as great. So, I've actually skipped a block here, and the skimmer is sort of retained literally by its front lip absolutely fine though never leaked totally dry and I can actually see right in there to make sure I did put sealant around this joint between the wide mouth part and the standard skimmer and it doesn't leak at all absolutely dry which is brilliant because every other one I've seen leaks like a sieve um, pipe work here this is the only thing with this Sichi pump it's only got a one inch inlet and outlet so I did have to cobble together um, a, a, an arrangement of fittings to marry it up to the uh, solvent weld 43mm pipe that I've used. But again, um, it worked absolutely fine. I solvent welded it all and I haven't had a leak at all. So works great. Um, as I said before, this is the coming from the filtration system, which we'll go back to in a second. And I'm using these Cockney Koi ball valves, seem to work great, so I can seal that off if I need to. Um, just looking along the back of the pond there, I just added a couple of uh, blocks as basically sort of stanchions against the wall. Probably didn't need them, but uh, I used a coring drill to come through uh, with an SDS drill. Be careful if you're doing that because you can hurt your arms and your wrists if you're not doing it right. Okay. See the rest of it there. You can see that pipe coming down from the overflow. And I've got an overflow coming out of the top-up box as well. I need to join that up to this ribbed pipe and then that system will be complete there. So, but it's not a major biggie at the moment. Some of me nice hookahs there. 
berry smoothie hookahra. Uh, not sure how you say this one's uh, Lizimachia Goldilocks. Um, I think this is another one of those, but um, an Outback Sunset, I think this one's called. So ultimately these should have nice flowers on them. That is a trailing petunia, I think. Some ferns. So yeah, let's go back round to the uh, filter and carry on with that for a second. A few other plants there. That's a spider's web, Japanese aurelia. Common spotted orchid there as well. Maples there. But we were talking about the filter. So that controller there is Wi Fi controllable. So using the uh, CG Control app, I can go into that and adjust it, turn it off. Um, you can even set it on the timer so it turns off at certain times. It's really useful if you've got an automatic feeder actually. If you stop things getting sucked down the skimmer, you turn it off for a, half an hour. Um, and it's highly adjustable. The skimmer actually works when that's running at even like 10%. It still clears the surface. Um, but I do tend to run it a bit higher than that to get a bit of flow going in the pond. Um, and that skimmer Actually, we couldn't see that from the end there. You've got two outlets here. That's directly from the skimmer, essentially. And each is controlled by a ball valve. So I've got one sort of that generates a bit of surface turbulence. And I've got another one. You probably won't be able to see it from here. Not quite. Further down, about halfway down, I've got another outlet that um, points downwards. And again, both of those have got 45 degree elbows on them. You can just about see them there. So the flow is directionable. A little bit of water cress growing there. They say the nutrient level is so low in here that it's not really growing very fast at the moment. I actually had it full and running with water for about eight weeks before I added any fish and I put some activated carbon down in here. So let's just, we'll cover that in a second actually, we'll just go sort of through this methodically. So, um, bottom drain pipe comes in through there, the um, ball valve there obviously to close it off if necessary. Comes through up into the easy pod via a three inch, 90 degree swept elbow, rubber boot connects on and then obviously you've got the easy pod that you're probably familiar with the media in there now next thing is uh, there's an assembly down in there let's see if we can lighten it up a bit uh, the rubber boots elbows all three inch which essentially brings the flow out into this mix bed, DIY mix bed filter that I've made. Let's turn that pump off a minute. And actually, yeah, it, it is loud. And I'll tell you why in a minute. It's better. So you can see the mix bed that actually I've just got this sort of protein skimmer that I was messing around with put in there for the moment. Just ignore that for a minute. So that there, grey is the outlet from the easy pod and I've got a aquatic plant basket with the hole slightly enlarged on the end of that uh, just because when you turn the flow off there's a possibility that some of the media could go back into the easy pod which wouldn't be the end of the world to be fair because it when you turned it on again it would probably just be put back out but I've got that on there for now this is definitely a work in progress. This um, obviously there's not a lot of media in there at the moment. Um, it's about a 60 litre capacity tub, um, so probably have about 20, 25 litres of uh, media in there ultimately. But I'm going to sort of add it slowly and see how well it aerates. You see, I've got a couple of just 
uh, stones in there at the moment. I think they're going to probably need upgrading as it evolves, basically. Um, as I say, it doesn't really need a lot at the moment because it's, uh, there's not a lot of bio load. You see that perforated pipe there is where the vary pump sucks from and there's a uniseal going through there and there's a uniseal on there where it comes in as well. They did leak a little bit so I put silicon around them and eventually got it to stop and I've not got a single drip now nice and dry down in there. Um, obviously that is a problem. This media is getting stuck to that outlet pipe even though I drilled loads of holes in it. So I suppose there comes a point where you know the media will become free moving I suppose when all of those holes are obscured. So we'll see how it goes. Um, as I say it's not the end of the world and I don't think it will have a huge impact on the um, filtration capacity of it so long as the aeration in there is really quite strong um, I think that will probably keep enough of the media moving around to achieve what's needed so, um, so moving on we've the air flow in there currently I've got this um, Jaboa Jackod I don't know how you say it, PA80 air pump and yeah pretty impressed with it um, but it is too powerful. Um, it's ideal for cleaning the easy pod. It's I think there's enough air. I've only cleaned the pod a couple of times actually so you know maybe that when it gets a lot dirtier it's not enough but so far it seems like it does boil the media really well and thoroughly but when I'm not using it for that I'm using it for bubbling through the mix bed and obviously doing the bottom drain and I'm finding it way too powerful to do that so I'm bleeding off a lot of air so that's what that hose is it's going behind my garden basically and letting off the excess air and I don't want to be doing that really because it's creating a lot of noise and it is using more electricity than is needed. So I think I might downsize and get a 45 or a 35 just to run the bottom drain and the mixed bed. But I'll probably keep this and use that to do the easy pod cleaning and maybe even tee them together so that when I do the easy pod cleaning I'm using both of them. So that'll be oh, well over 100 litres a minute, so should do the job. Um, so I need to get one of those um, so we can keep that noise down. Um, there's kind of a makeshift arrangement with the old plank of wood there as well. Might put it on a bracket here, fix it better there somehow. Uh, so moving on, after the uh, it's come out of the mixed bed, goes through the uh, very pump there and up into TMC Ultima 30 watt UV and again because of the space I've got in here I've had to do a bit of a um, interesting job on the uh, plumbing and that is basically solvent weld pipe and elbow going straight on to the hose tail and again that did leak a bit so I solvent welded it and then put silicon around the outside yeah it's rough and ready but it works and it doesn't take up a lot of space uh, TMC do do the um, unions um, that you can add on which would obviously be a better option but just purely wouldn't fit in the amount of space I've got there so it's not pretty but it works so then when it's gone through the uh, Ultima there, it comes out the other end in a similar manner, down an elbow and then that pipe comes back along and you can see it exiting there, the solid smooth pipe that is, and then that is the one that goes down the end diagonally back into the pond. So that's the output of the easy pod essentially. So, uh, so yeah, impressed with the uh, Ultima. 
Now, I know what you're thinking here. You're thinking, flipping neck, that's going to be an absolute nightmare to change the bulb in that when it's time. Um, and I do realise that I'm going to have to do a bit of rearranging, dismantling when it comes time to do that. That's why I made the, these outside planks for the filter bunker are all removable. Um, particularly, I'm thinking about from the front. All I need to do is just pull that sofa out and then I can disconnect those um, planks if I need to just to access things, you know, it, even like the pipe work and the uh, elbows and that sort of thing if I need to replace those. Um, I'd like more room to be honest. Who wouldn't? Everyone always needs more room. This is a space I've got to play with. So I think this is um, easily to start with enough for this size pond and what I've got in it which I'll tell you about in a second um, and as I say I have got other things planned which will add on to the uh, capacity of it down the line so there you go say so that's probably about 1.5 meters long by 80 front to back the kind of footprint that we're in um, so yeah, ultimately I'm going to probably clad the insides with some more of the insulation, probably the lid as well, and I might even put some uh, noise acoustic, sorry, acoustic foam in there as well, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So um, I'm going to put the air back on and we'll have a look at what we've got in the pond. I've just been adding some of this um, NT Labs filter bugs as I've been getting things up and running, putting a bit of that in occasionally. Uh, nitrite, ammonia, all seems fine at the moment, certainly within safe levels. Um, so, as you can see, did have a little bit of algal growth in there, um, but since adding the fish they have actually cleared it up nicely had a bit of sort of string algae but yeah they've nibbled all that away and so you can see the windows there bottom drain the one thing I'm having with this bottom drain is because the amounts of air going in I'm having to tweak it very very slightly so I've got a few of these valves and stuff on there so that'll do for now because it does actually interfere with the uh, skimmer when you've got the air uh, in the center like that it's pushing everything to the side so I've got the um, we sort of surface flow down this end and you see this valve I can adjust that so that's really weak at the moment coming out of there I kind of like to run it like that um, I can get that so it's like a tsunami wave coming out of there if I need to and that pushes everything down to the skimmer end but when you've got the air coming up like that that is a lot of flow there basically so let's see if we can tone it down a little bit more so I'm just using like little um, hose fittings and valves I think I got this one from B&Q there we go, that's better. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so going back, we were talking about what's in the pond here. And uh, I've currently I've got um, four shabunkins. And let's see if we can tempt them up. Okay, here we go. Just put a bit of food in to get them up. So we've got four shabunkins, four sarasa comets. And a couple of tench, a green one and a gold one. Okay, just gone from a garden centre. I'm not going to spend a lot of money on like koi or anything like that just yet because it's early days. I'm not saying I'm not going to put koi in it. I may well put some in down the line, but probably next year if anything. 
okay and I'm not averse to moving things on either you know giving away stuff if I need to it's all in the development of the pond so water clarity seems really good to me at the moment and uh, they seem pretty healthy water temperature is around 16 degrees which is the warmest it's been and one of the things about that Sichi SDC pump is that it gives you a track of the temperature over the last up to 60 days which is really interesting to see nice already showing signs of spawning these comets chasing each other around and um, you can see I've got a few little wrinkles there in the liner in the background and I think that is one thing about box welds unless your pond is actually perfectly rectangular and to those dimensions then you know there's a good chance that you're going to have wrinkles in it I think to expect to not have any at all might be unrealistic so it's just about your expectations really. Beautiful shabunk in that one. A little mark on the glass there. I do want to put some plants in there as well actually, which obviously I realise is slightly at odds with having an aerated bottom drain. So I've got a lily up in that far corner, hanging in a basket from the coping. Um, so we'll see how that does. It's not doing a lot at the moment, but I don't see any reason why it shouldn't grow. Um, Black Princess Water Lily. So we'll have an update on that at some point in the future. So that's about it for now. Um, all seems to be going well at the moment. Just uh, actually I'm feeding them on some of this Medicoy Junior. Seems to be about the right size for them three millimetre pellets. Uh, it's taken them, you know, a week to get to almost hand feeding. Nearly there with the hand feeding. It's still a little bit jumpy, but just want to watch them grow and grow, grow now. I haven't got any kind of defence on this pond yet, but that is something that I am considering and looking into and I'm not going to be leaving it very long I thought about an electric wire between the pergola posts on those two sides uh, maybe a PIR water sprayer none of them seems ideal though so I'm still thinking about it but uh, that may be something that I uh, can put in the next update that I bring you. So I hope you found this video interesting and if you've got any questions just uh, stick them in the comments below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. Uh, I've got loads of photos of the build and that sort of thing so if anyone's interested in me doing a, uh, a run through of the uh, build process and the uh, transformation of the old garden then just let me know. Okay, so till next time, take care and see you later folks.